Hi, Brett here and welcome back to Self Reliance Australia. Today's video is one that I took a little while ago. Uh, we look had some mold in one particular corner of our house and for whatever reason there tend to be a bit of moisture in that spot. Uh, we also had a fair bit of stuff stored in that room so airflow may have been a bit of a causal factor to that mold developing. So the video goes through the steps that we took uh, to eliminate it, fix it and look it starts inside ends up outside with cladding coming off um, and back inside with painting so look i hope you enjoy it look it has worked for us it now has been oh look i reckon almost two years since i did that piece of work um i'm in that room now every single day as part of my office as well so look it has the mold has not come back it's been a great fix and i hope you enjoy it let's get into it So that's, this is the wall. So to get rid of the mold, we first used exit mold, let that sit there for a few hours. Then we hit with sugar soak, which is a product we have here in Australia, and then sand the wall completely. So as you go through, you'll see those steps. I'll talk through more about it towards the end as well, but that's the wall that we had to fix. So this is the corner of that room from, from the outside. You can see I started pulling off some of the quad around the windows there looks very wet and this is the problem that we've had is that this sheet you can see there is this it's just really waterlogged so whatever's happened underneath that is keeping the moisture I think in that wall so I need to take that off today uh, and replace it something I have never ever done before so let's just see how this works out uh, and we'll let you know how it goes so one of the things that we did have to do, or have already done, is this pipe that you can see here. Uh, when we first moved in, that's obviously pressurised to the water tanks that you can see down there. Uh, and that was leaking out of this connection here and it was very mouldy and very wet in this corner all the time. So I'll fix that problem up, uh, hopefully. No more, there's no more mould anyway in, sitting around the pipe, which has been good. Um, so I'm hoping that's starting to dry that area up but it looks like that sheet is getting water in from somewhere else as well so today it's not meant to rain so it's not looking promising though um, so I need to get that sheet off as quick as I can and get a new one up and seal it off as best as I can so I've just pulled the corner piece off that wall and look what's living underneath there yep friendly scorpion so it's starting to get some of the sheet off. It's pretty rotted. Had to break a bit off, got some water pipe there. But so as you can see, it's not really well flashed in around that window frame at all. Like, I don't think it has any. Okay, so we've got the sheet off that I want to get off. I need to get some more parts, some more supplies, because I'm missing some of these. I don't have any of those. And this has all come off and torn off. But what I am happy about is that you can see that there's no mould actually inside the wall. You can see where the water's coming in there. It's coming in through here. This is quite wet in this corner. Actually, even that stud, oh gee, that stud's even a bit wet and damp there. So I need to take that off. See of it. See this got this plastic sheet on it, which is probably good in the day, but these days we actually like the wall to breathe in and out. So they have actually vapor sheeting, which this clearly is not and nor is that that just keeps the moisture inside the wall which is probably part of the cause um, but hey it is what it is at the moment so I just want to seal it off make sure there's no water coming in so I can seal that back down um, put this paper back up tape it where I've cut it because I had to actually cut that sheet and see how we go from there but back down to the hardware store to get some supplies so I've taped it all back up <clears throat> where I've cut it before. Try to seal it as much as I can. Okay, so I've taped that up there. Just about ready to put some silicon into that gap there. And then I'll start measuring up to put the board back on. Okay, nearly finished, thankfully. You can see the grey skies in the background there. 
the rain held off, so no rain today, which was nice. Uh, not a lot of sun though. So you can see, had to get another sheet to put on there. Um, had to paint the back of it because the old sheet wasn't painted on the back and that's where the water got water logged in. It would be coming down through the back here um, and there wasn't any flashing on the side. So the water had come down from the top of the flashing up there and basically worked its way down the side of the window frame in underneath the corner here. And there's actually an open area of the, the sheeting at the back which was allowing it to get in between and it's just waterlogged right here. Um, and because it wasn't sealed on the back, the water had soaked into the timber and just rotted away. So I had to paint that, put a primer undercoat on sealer on that today. Measure it up, fit it in. Uh, got the tap back on loosely. Uh, I reckon I might need to change that tomorrow. Just lift it up a little bit. Um, I've got the the quad back around the windows, but you know, as it normally happens when you start doing handyman work, uh, one thing will lead to another. And so tomorrow I'm going to, have to get some paint to now match that into the rest of the wall. Uh, paint the quad that's around, but as you can see, the window frames are peeling off pretty badly as well. So I have to <laughs> strip that back and start again but you see there's a couple of pieces of timber still missing so while i haven't got those bits on the joins as you can see down the bottom as well um, i have actually put sealer on there so when the rain comes as predicted tonight um, that should stay nice and dry now i did get this corner piece i wasn't able to manage to get a new one from the local hardware but we live in a small town of about 1200 people so the hardware is not massive but as you can see, there's a join here now. So I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to get one the full 2700 long. Um, so I have to try and get some of that over the next few days if I ever get the chance to do the air and a bit trip to the nearest big town. Uh, but apart from that, I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out. Um, I'm still going inside. So inside, I've been able to sand two walls today. I'll try and do the other two tonight because um, I can do that while it's dark outside I can turn the light on inside and do that but they're coming along okay but so far progressing feeling pretty tight after a couple of big days actually so yesterday was a big day doing all the cleaning and prepping inside um, and doing a little bit of prep work out here as well and then just got up early this morning and ripped that wall off found out that the sheet that I thought was going to fit didn't fit uh, so I've been down to the hardware store a few times a day, just getting bits and pieces going, oops, needed that. Um, but very happy. Okay, so quick update of where we're up to. So I've now, s we've treated the mould, washed it down, cleaned it down. I've now sanded all the old walls there. You can see there's multiple layers. We've actually stripped the paint, scraped the paint off the skirting boards. And there was a desk on the back wall here that used to be white uh, that is now included in this refurb where we're going to repaint that desk as well um, and some shelves. Then over here as we come around the room, got some walls and some cupboards. Now the paint, the old paint on that was actually peeling off. So I've actually had to physically scrape that off, uh, sand it and give it a clean off. Um, and we'll go from there. But yeah, we could just paint over the top of that. That was pretty bad. Look like the person before did not do any paint prep at all and the key to a good paint job is prep work so that's what we're up to so we're now about to start taping up to get ready to do some undercoat primer sealer around the room uh, so that the new paint can stick onto it nicely okay so a quick update so it's been about an hour and a half had some help from the kids got the skirts done that we've put a primer undercoat on all the rooms so you can see up to the walls there even with this desk done all the way through and these crazy pink cupboards that used to be there have all now got primer on them and the coat ready to go so it is fairly cool down here at the moment so we've got topped of about 10 12 degrees so i am gonna let that sit now um, I know they say you could probably recoat in two hours, but they do say four hours if it's cool weather. So for me, that means tomorrow. And I guess the plan was maybe do two coats tomorrow, but I reckon with the cold weather, I'll probably leave it a full day, let it soak in really well, let it dry up. So then 
but you run through it tomorrow and finish it off on the day after. Well here we go, we have the first top coat done. So just pan back here, so these are cupboards. You might remember they were like peeling paint originally. I had to scrape them all back and sand them back. But they have come up a treat. I'm really, really happy with that. And that feels nice and solid. That doesn't feel like it's going to be peeling at all. And so it shouldn't. Because as I keep saying, the key to a good paint job is the preparation. It's not even the paint. Oh, to a certain degree, you only want good quality paint. But if you do the preparation work well, the paint will stick and look good. You'll notice that down on the skirting boards down here. I'm going to use a, we are using enamel down there, so it's just a little bit harder. Uh, so when you're vacuuming the floor and sweeping the floor, you're not going to be ripping the paint off those skirting boards. But look, the paint, uh, because of the blue behind, the blue actually behind the white, is uh, just takes a little bit for the white to cover that. So we are going to go for a second top coat today, which will be three coats of white. And that should then finish it off. And as you can see, we've got some white on this desk here, so that's made a big difference as well. Overall, very happy with how it's all turned out. So here we go, it is now fully painted. Two coats, two top coats, one undercoat, primer coat, same deal. I got an, I know it's probably not for all those people out there about to write me mail saying it's not the same thing. Uh, they've got enamel on the skirting boards. And also put enamel on top of this, uh, enamel gloss on top of this desk here as well. But look, it has come up quite well. I'm really happy with the result. Obviously we've got a little bit of finishing off still to do, like take the tape off around the fixtures, put new knobs onto the desk. I'm also gonna put new knobs onto the cupboard and clearly I need to put those shelves up. But one thing I didn't do as I, was, as I put all my tools away was actually talk about all the tools that we use to clean this and paint it and sand it and strip it back. So uh, if I'm going off the top of my head, we started with like a scouring brush and a whole heap of exit mold so get rid of the mold up front. So we just let that sit there for about three or four hours to eat away and kill the mold off. Then we came back and sugar soaked it. I'm not too sure if that's a product that you actually have overseas or not, but in Australia, sugar soap is something that we use quite a lot before we paint a wall. And so I guess all the, the scum and build up of, I guess, just life off the walls before you paint it. So it gives a nice clean surface for the paint to go onto. After that, I use just an old ball sander. So nothing expensive. It's still an old plug into the power cord. So it's not a cordless, one or anything is just a is just a cheaper OB that I, I bought and had I've had for many years. I don't use it professionally, so I didn't go out and spend a lot of money on one of those. But it's something I have had for you know, a solid probably twenty years, and it does the trick. Uh, look, I know there's better ones out there now. Obviously, there's been a lot better technology. There's also cordless ones with great batteries and all that sort of stuff. But hey, look, I don't use it that often, so that is enough. I also use a two-inch scraper, particularly. On these walls over here, the paint was peeling off and it's just disgusting. And it took me a night to scrape that back with the scraper. Uh, and then from there, I used, uh, look, we also used oh, probably about a one and a half inch brush to do the skirts and also around the corners, like in the corners we see down there, like obviously I put a little, like a little edge around before I paint with a roller and I used a, a normal you know, probably a 12 inch roller that goes around as well. Also I have a roller tray. Uh, and then to clean up, I actually use a little little um, dishwashing scouring pad actually, and I use that to, there's any build up on my brushes, on my paint tray as well. I scrub that back because that stuff adds up. It's, you know, I know it uses a little bit more water to clean up and it takes a little bit more time, but I've got good quality rollers, I've got good quality brushes, I've also got a good quality roller tray. So. That will last me if I keep it clean. And I, have, I am a big believer in if you look after your tools, your tools will look after you. As opposed to just getting cheap disposable stuff and throwing it out all the time. It's also good for the planet, which is one of the reasons why we're living out on property. So we want to do our thing and make sure we protect what we have come here to enjoy. As far as paint goes, paint goes. So, look, I already had some primer undercoat. 
um, already in tin, so I didn't have to buy that. But between inside and outside, um, I probably have spent a couple hundred dollars on paint. It's probably about ninety hundred dollars for the internal paint. And that was a mold resistant paint that we've used in here, low VOC, so it doesn't have a lot of smell going through the house, um, and it's supposed to have a seven year guarantee on stopping mold and mildew coming back onto the walls, which is something that we're keen to prevent. Uh, and that was about it. Also had some enamel, so I didn't actually have to go and buy any more enamel because I've just been painting a couple of internal doors already and skirts in another room. So that was already handy. So that was good. Um, outside, I was out there some paint for outside, so I, I did buy a four litre tin of that out there. Mind you, I haven't used all of that, but I will definitely use it around the house at different times. Um, so that was also, so it cost roughly about in between 80 to 100 dollars for a tin of four litre paint here in Australia at the moment once you've got the tint and all that sort of stuff put into it. Um, also that the, the board outside was probably one of the more expensive parts of the job actually. Um, so all up, all the materials, probably about 400 bucks, all done. So room inside is all painted, mould removed, the sheet outside that was destroyed and waterlogged has been taken off, prepped, primed and painted externally and it's all back together and it's all looking rather good. But that's a big thing, like I don't think for a lot of stuff you need a lot of tools. Uh, you don't need to go out and buy expensive stuff either. Um, you can do it with stuff and quite often you may be able to borrow stuff if you don't already have it yourself. Um, but like I just like to show that you can actually do stuff, it doesn't take a lot, especially painting. The painting is the easy part. It's actually the prep work that takes time. And if you get, spend the time you're doing the prep work well, I believe the paint will last and look good once you've got it done as well. So prep is king when it comes to painting. Okay, so that's the new sheet on, painted. For those that have the keen eyes on the previous videos, you'd notice that I've actually done a quick trim and painted these around the windows as well down the side of the house there because I did replace them last winter. Uh, yeah, so new sheet on. Now I didn't use, have to use a four inch brush to paint this because it's textured. So the roller won't work on that very well at all. So I actually just painted that by hand with a brush. Now I do need to finish off. You can see I need some strips to go across up there. Well, there you go. Uh, the job was done. As I mentioned at the start, it has been probably a couple of years now since I did that piece of work and the mold has not come back. So I'm really happy with the result. Look, there was a fair bit of work in it and far more than I expected <laughs> than when I first started. I thought it might just be a quick clean and a quick coat of paint, um, but it was definitely more than that. And it definitely took me outside my comfort zone. And what it taught me, and hopefully it's something that you can learn from as well, is that it doesn't really matter what your skill level is. If you have a go, sometimes you can actually fix the problem. Uh, that's actually my brother once said to me, he goes, what's the worst case that can possibly happen that you don't get it right and you have to call someone in to fix it um, so something of that was low risk because if I hadn't have been able to do it and get someone in they weren't starting they probably weren't having to fix my mistakes so much they would have just had to fix the problem um, so it wasn't like it was going to cost me a whole heap more but the upshot is that if it works which it did I saved myself a lot of money a lot of time because it is hard to get some tradies out in our small town because we do have a small town and those type of jobs are quite small and it's not the type of work that a lot of them want to do so we are having to be more self-reliant in the location that we are but also it's a sense of satisfaction that you can actually do some stuff around your house too um, knowing that you can actually look after and take care of your own property is a good feeling so look i hope you enjoyed it hope it's been beneficial if you have liked it please share it with your friends hit the subscribe button hit the little bell give us a big thumbs up and Look forward to seeing you next time.